What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about summertime worm fishing. My favorite techniques, my favorite baits for each technique. Let's go. Summertime worm fishing. We're talking breaks, ledges, humps, Carolina rigs, Texas rigs, drop shots, shaky heads, magnum shaky heads. We're going to cover all of it because summertime, it's a great time to fish shallow. Probably should have a frog tied on right now, but it's also a great time to go out deep and throw big worms, big baits, big bites, big bass, right? So those of you guys that follow the channel for, for uh, some time now know that Matt and I, we love uh, going to Mexico and Texas and heck man, I can't help but think about when I'm talking big worms, my mind automatically goes back to watching those guys down there on Falcon. What was it in like 2000 and eight, 2000, yeah, 2008, 2007, something like that. When those guys literally had electric, electrical tape wrapped on their fingers, band-aids uh, wrapped on their fingers because the braid and they caught so many big fish uh, was just cutting through their hands. But it was when they broke all those records, you know, pa Paul Elias, uh, what, Terry, Sr just there were some mega bags 40, 44 pound bags, and a lot of those fish were caught throwing big worms. Some were caught on crankbaits, but most of them were caught deep. And uh, anytime I'm thinking summertime worming, I automatically go back to watching that, uh, that tournament and just how uh, cool it was to see so many giant fish caught on big worms. So summertime worming. You know, summertime, if you're up shallow, you're flipping, you're pitching, you're punching, you're frogging, you're throwing top water, right? When these fish go out deep and you're out there on those deeper ledges, those breaks, uh, current seams, river bends where the channel turns, those fish stage up there and it is so much fun to drag a big 15 inch curly tail worm. When you get that dunk, your heart starts pumping. You don't know if it's a 12 incher or a 12 pounder. You give them a little second or two to get that bait. You feel that dunk, give them a second or two, let them get that bait all the way in their mouth. You reel down, you feel the pet pressure, you load up on them and then it's war, right? Big old bucket mouth comes out of the water, 15 inch worms, 14 inch worms, 10 inch, 12 inch worms you guys get the point. It is so much fun. It's a lot like uh, throwing big swim baits. When you get that dunk, that bite, your heart just gets going. You're waiting to just rear back and load up on them. But I love it. I love fishing uh, deep This, this uh, with these techniques, you know, shaky heads, big Carolina rigs, um, Texas rigs. We're going to cover it all. More importantly, we're gonna cover my favorite baits. And, I, and basically, worm fishing, at least summertime worm fishing, I'm not talking about your little shad shaped worms or your little drop shot baits, right? We're talking straight tail worms and curly tail worms. And typically how I break it down, well, and we have big wacky worms. We're gonna talk about that too, because that is an exception. But for the mo most part, you have a straight tail worm and you have a curly tail worm or a ribbon tail worm. This is going to have a lot more action um, just dragging or at slower speeds. You know, this is just gonna be down there as you pop the rod, you got your big shaky head, you know, the, the whole bait pops up and then the, the tail does a little bit of dancing, but just dragging those big ribbon tail or uh, curly tail worms are gonna have a lot more action. So those are the two categories that I break my summertime worms into. Straight tail worms and curly tail worms. Now, like I just said, when I'm fishing, if I'm throwing a big Texas rig 
or a big Carolina rig, 99.9% of the time, I'm throwing some kind of curly tail worm. Some of my favorites. You guys know for years I've talked about the Zoom Mag Ole Monster, right? It's a 12 inch worm, okay? 12 inch worm. The body of the worm is fairly large. I'm gonna show you here in a second some other options. This is a great worm. We have pounded lots of biggins on this worm, okay? That's the Mag Ole Monster. Then there's the Ole Monster, quite a bit smaller. Okay, you see that? See this actual size of, this is a big worm. You're gonna need a big oversized worm hook, like a six or a seven aught. I'll link all of the gear down below in the video description. But for you guys that want to throw a big worm, not a giant bodied worm, but still have that big curly tail, you know, you can go with just the traditional old monster, okay? Two other really awesome baits that I love throwing. Two different versions. This is called the C-Mac. You guys know how much we love the T-Mac. That is our go-to straight tail, like shaky head worm, the T-Mac. Well, here is the C-Mac. Okay. I'm just going to assume the C stands for Carolina rig. Could be completely wrong, but in my mind, that's what it is. Okay. So here's the C-Mac. That is the 11 inch C-Mac and the old monster. Basically the same size. Okay. The C-Mac also comes in a 15 inch bait. It's so long, the tail comes still attached. So you gotta break these little tabs. Make sure you get do that so you get the most action out of your tail. So here is a 15 inch versus the 11 inch. Quite a bit longer, but as you can see, the worm itself is still basically just a little bit bigger in diameter than your favorite shaky head worm, right? That, that, that T-Mac. Here is the Maggle Monster. Quite, it's at least twice um, the size. You're gonna need a lot bigger, more stout of a hook to get through that plastic. So the C-Mac is an amazing bait. It comes in a 15 inch, um, but it's not so big on the uh, body of the worm that you have to use oversized gear. Now where these worms really come into play. Now you guys know that we love bait fuel. At least we've done videos in the past on it. Traditionally, for like swim baits and all that sort of stuff, we've always just kind of, we've tried all the scents, we've made our own scents, we've done all that stuff, uh, and it's just messy and we don't typically do it. Um, but when bait fuel came out, I think last year, or the year before, two years ago, you know, you're always curious, right? Is this really working? And I know the first time for me using it, I was throwing the T-Mac, I was fishing, summertime fishing, I was throwing a shaky head, um, pulled into a spot where I thought there was fish, fished probably 10 or 15 minutes, didn't catch anything. Went back in the center console, pulled out the, the bait fuel, doused the worm in it, threw it out there, first cast caught one, next cast caught one. I'm like, hmm, maybe there's something to this. So what's cool about the net bait products, and you guys will probably see this either at your local tackle shop or on, on Tackle Warehouse. Some of your favorite colors will be sold out. It's because they're discontinuing basically the traditional baits and now they're coming pre-blended uh, or made with bait fuel infused. So the C-Mac, the T-Mac now come in bait fuel with it already in 
poured into the bait. Tackle Warehouse already has the T-Mac. Uh, the C-Mac, you'll see like our favorite colors are like Junebug. You'll see that some of those colors are already gone because they are bringing in those C-Macs with the bait fuel. So that is an added bonus. But that guy right there, the 11 inch and the 15 inch, um, you don't need to be overwhelmed with your gear. I mean, that is a normal Cinco size, like a, like a five inch Cinco size diameter. So you could throw your favorite worm rod and still be throwing a 15 inch bait. The other one that is really good, this is gonna be the entire lineup for my curly tail worms or ribbon tail worms, is the X-Zone. That's the X-Zone Blitz, that's 11 inch worm. See, it's got old Palinix mug on there. You guys know that we done do a ton of underwater footage. That is a money bait right there. Actually, we are big fans of a lot of X-Zone products and, and kind of how that happened, kind of go off on a little bit of tangent here. You know, we were playing around, we're always trying new baits, we're trying this or that, and we really, really liked X-Zone came out with their Ned bait a couple years ago and we really, really liked it in underwater footage the way it stood up. You know, for guys that fish Ned rigs, that's really, really important how that bait acts or sits in the water. You know, if you're real aggressive with hopping that bait, it doesn't matter if the that bait floats or not, but if you're just sitting there, you kind of want that bait doing a little bit of motion. So we did some underwater footage and that bait was awesome, caught a ton of fish on it. Then Matt really fell in love with the swammer, was telling me about it. I started catching a bunch of fish on it. It's a real aggressive rolled swim bait. So we're like, huh, Exxon actually puts out some, some good stuff. Well, this year at the Bassmaster Classic, these guys are geniuses because they had a, a booth basically right at the main entrance and they had a big tank. And they literally had all of their baits underwater online. And I'm looking at, they have a deception worm it's right there with that T-Mac. It's, it's, it, the T-Mac and the Deception Worm are my two favorite straight tail shaky head worms. Uh, but they had the entire lineup there and it showed the buoyancy of their entire lineup. Like uh, all their worms, their drop shot worms, their shaky head worms, everything is just like poop, right? Shaky head worm, drop shot worm sits completely horizontal. A lot of baits, when you look at underwater footage, if you're not giving them a ton of motion or action, they just kind of boop, right? So X-Zone has some really cool baits. If you haven't checked them out already, you should check them out. I've been blown away so far by all the baits we've, we've tried. So to kind of backtrack, if I'm throwing a big Carolina rig, of course I pick up a Texas rig. If I'm throwing a big Carolina rig and I'm talking about like I'm out there on the ledges on the Tennessee River and I'm throwing a, a three quarter ounce or a one ounce tungsten sinker. You know, I want that thing down there. I want it down the current um, and I want a big presentation, okay? I'm throwing a five or a seven aught worm hook. I'm gonna be throwing either that Maggle Monster, that's the beefiest worm, ribbon tail worm I, I throw, or I'm gonna be throwing that 15 inch C-Mac or that blitz worm, okay? Those are my go-tos, but I'm looking for a big bite. That is why I'm throwing such a big worm. Now the benefit, like I said a little bit earlier, the benefit of throwing a Carolina rig, let's talk about that for a second. For those of you guys that don't know what a Carolina rig is, you basically have your main line, then you have a swivel, and you have your leader line that you tie your hook and your bait to. I usually run a bobber stop. I can adjust it, right? A lot of times you want that weight free floating. And here's why. When you're throwing a one ounce sinker and that bass comes along and eats your worm and that sinker is not sliding, it's not giving, as soon as they eat that worm and they get that line tight, they automatically feel that one ounce sinker, right? They feel that resistance. That is why I have a little bit of play. That's why I run two bobber stops. You can go without a bobber stop and your weight will run all the way up. Um, the benefit of running the top bobber stop is I can adjust 
the amount of play I have in that weight and where that comes into play, castability. If I don't have that bobber, bobber stop, um, a lot of times when you go to whip your Carolina rig out, um, that weight just goes kind of tumbling and you don't get that far or that long of a cast. So I actually put the bobber stop on there to kind of manage or maintain that, uh, that amount of play, right? So when this fish eats, it's gonna have about six or seven inches, unless I adjust it, a foot, 18 inches of play before that rod starts loading up and they feel the resistance of that bait. Now, talking about Carolina rigs, you have a leader. So you have your main line and you have a swivel and then you have your leader, okay? I traditionally typically run braid. Stronger, more sensitive, um, no stretch. I run braid as my main line. I have my sinker, my bobber stops, my swivel, and then I run anywhere from a, a two to a six foot leader for my bait, okay? With that said, when you're throwing a Carolina rig, because you can only reel up to the start of your leader, where your weight is, you're going to have anywhere from two to four to six feet of line that you kind of have to lob out there, okay? You're gonna want a at least a seven foot four rod, typically seven six or seven nine, even an eight foot Carolina rig is great. You don't need any anything super powerful. I like like a like a medium heavy to heavy power, right? Because I want to be able to bury that hook and control those big fish on the ledges. But you can throw um, your favorite Texas rig or jig rod uh, as a Carolina rig, but. But if I'm throwing a, or if I'm fishing a dragging technique, the other one is going to be just a straight Texas rig. I'll show you the difference between that and a Carolina rig. Okay, a Texas rig is just that. You can peg or not to peg with a bobber stop. Again, you understand the difference between the sliding weight and not. Um, for me, I like to peg, but again, I will leave a little bit of play that way that, that fish doesn't, doesn't uh, feel that, that resistance right off the bat. Take your favorite tungsten bullet weight, anywhere from an eight, eighth to one ounce, depending on how, how deep you're fishing and the current you're fishing, and then your favorite worm hook. But that is a Texas rig, right? The, the, the weight is connected basically to the head of the worm. It's still a, dra uh, a dragging technique, but you can get more aggressive with it, right? When you pop, you're not gonna have that play like you did with that Carolina rig. You can pop that rig, up, uh, that, that Texas rig up and over a stump or off of a shell bed, off of a break, um, but you're gonna have a lot more response fishing it this way. But again, when you're dragging, you wanna have a worm with some subtle action. And what that ribbon tail is gonna do down there in the current or just slowly drag it, it's just gonna just kinda rock, right? You could even swim it, get that thing swimming. I don't know where this wind's coming from. It does feel nice. Uh, but that ribbon tail, if you're just dragging a straight tail worm, nothing's happening, it's just sitting there. Uh, the benefit to that deception or that T-Mac is it's poop, it's elevated, so it has some motion in the current but for the most part, most straight tail worms just lay on the bottom and there's no, there's no action. So that's why the, the category, the two categories, straight tail and ribbon tail, if I'm doing a dragging technique, I'm throwing some kind of ribbon tail worm, okay? Again, that's that 7.7 seven Heavy X Pride. That is an awesome Carolina rig rod. It's an awesome big Texas rig rod. Braid to leader, again, more power, more sensitivity, less stretch can really, especially when you make a long cast or you're drifting along a ledge or a break, you have a lot of line out there. Reeling down and jacking them don't have a lot of stretch, allows you to get really good hook penetration in the roof of that fish's mouth. Okay, so that is ribbon tail worms. The blitz worm, the C-Mac, the old monster. Keep it really, really simple. Um, now let's talk about straight tail worms. When would you use a straight tail worm? Okay. 
let's start normal size. This is a traditional shaky head worm, right? That's actually, do I have that here? That's actually the missile magic worm. Another great bait. I like to throw um, on a shaky head, but I prefer it on a bait casting drop shot. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But let's talk about, let me unrig this, this, this bait. I'll rig on a, uh, rig on a T-Mac. So a shaky head, again, you're not going to have that, um, not going to have the, the weight slip of a Carolina rig or an unpegged Texas rig. Your bait is literally got line everywhere, literally connected to the head. Okay, that's, that's that little owner. Again, I'll link this stuff down below in the video description. But shake head, I'm gonna screw this bait, spin it on. It's great because it holds that bait on there, holds it nice and straight. Okay, I'm gonna rig this. Boom, you have a weedless. That is a fish catcher right there. I don't care if you're fishing for one pounders or 10 pounders, that straight catches them but you can see how the bait is all one, right? The weight is connected to the hook, the bait's connected to that. The fish are just gonna eat it. They're gonna fill the weight, doesn't matter, okay? But where this comes into play, boom, the bait's down. I can get real aggressive with a pop in it, doo -doo -doo, pop it up, let it fall. I can drag it. That deception worm, that X-Zone deception is gonna stand up. T-Max stands up, gonna shake it, get that tail moving. I'm, I'm not just doing that slow drag, right? Just waiting for that dunk. I'm actually pretty aggressive with my shaky heads, especially this time of the year. The water's warm, the fish are active. That thing is down there. I'm popping it up, letting it, I'm, I'm not popping it up four feet, but I might pop it up 18 inches, let it fall. Um, the benefit of being connected to the head is you're gonna have a lot more feel of your bottom composition. Are you in sand? Are you in mud? Are you on a shell bit? Are you on chunk rock? You're gonna feel it as you're dragging it. You're, that that sensitivity is gonna be transferred through that head up your line so you'll be able to feel what you're actually fishing down there. And, and today's electronics, you'll see, if it's on side imaging or whatever, you'll see that bright spot, that hard surface, whether it's a shell bed or gravel, chunk rock, something like that. But you're gonna be able to feel that as you're fishing it where those fish are staged in that rock. So the shaky head, okay? That's a traditional shaky head. Since we're talking summertime worms, we're talking big fish, we're talking big worms. Check out this shaky head. That is a Magnum Bates Wormser, okay? And that is actually, I think that's a eight aught hook, eight aught head. I'll link it down below. Owner makes a ton of really cool Magnum shaky heads. Um, I think that's a, I think it's a nine aught actually, okay? But here we go, same thing, you screw that bait on just like you did that last, that last shaky head. But look at the size difference in these shaky heads, okay? So you can see, it's just like throwing, do I wanna throw a little 2.8 Kitex swim bait or do I wanna throw an eight inch Huddleston or an 11 inch you know, hog hunt or something like that? It all depends on the fish you're after. But I will say, when you're throwing a big bait down there like this, like I said, that's that Wormser. It's kind of a, it's not a cylinder bait. It's kind of a, kind of a flat tail. So it has a lot of action, right? When you, when you are aggressive, you throw this thing out there. Again, this is that seven, six, that's a seven, six heavy envy black. That is a super sweet rod. I've been really liking, liking that rod. But again, I'm still staying fairly active with that shake with that nine aught hook half ounce, three quarter ounce head. I'm staying down. I have real good bottom contact. I can feel what's going on. Um, it feels like I'm about to get into some lily pads, <laughs> but all jokes aside, if you want to throw big worms, big shaky head, 
that gets bit and that pairs up great on that head. Again, you're throwing a 7.6 heavy, a little bit more stout of a rod. I'm actually throwing 20 pound leader on my braid. Again, when I get that big bite, I wanna be able to jack that fish and get him in the boat. So that's that Wormser. We talked about, that's that guy right there, Magnum Baits. Okay, we talked about that. We talked about the T-Mac and the Deception and the missile. Basically, those are my straight tail worms. You can, if I'm drop shotting this time of the year, especially if I'm in a largemouth fishery, you know, we talked about a Carolina rig, we talked about a Texas rig, we talked about a shaky head. Now let's talk about a drop shot or also known as a power shot, right? I'm using a bait caster, more stout, 15 pound line, I'm using a more stout of a hook, a heavier weight. I'm fishing this in the same areas. This just gets the bait up off the bottom. And that's what I really like. That missile worm, or the T-Mac the works great. That deception work works great. So those worms will work great on a shaky head or rigged on a power shot, okay? Those are basically the, the four techniques that I use and the different worms that I use but worm fishing this time of the year, actually there's one more. Those of you guys that like throwing wacky rigged worms, this is the Magnum Baits. That is a giant Senko. I'll link it down below. Um, that's rigged with a, a Frenzy Baits. That's actually a weighted wacky rigged hook. But if you guys like to fish big wacky rig stuff that is another worm that you guys should check out we caught a ton of fish big fish on that um lots of lots of giant fish down in mexico on that setup right there but guys summertime worm fishing you can't always catch them on a crankbait sometimes you gotta put down that 10 xd or that 6 xd or a zoom or whatever big crank you're throwing pick up that power shot pick up that carolina rig pick up that shaky head or pick up that Texas rig and finesse them. Yes, some of these worms are giant. Two pounders eat those giant worms. A lot of guys don't throw them. It's a lot of fun. They won't always eat reaction, but you take that big 15 inch C-Mac down there and you drag it and that ribbon tail is just working just so subtly in that current. Doop. Give them a second. Again, you need, if you set on the doop, you're gonna come back with uh, three quarters of your worm they're going to take just the back of it but give them a second to get that thing in their mouth you're going to reel down and jack them and again like i said they're not always going to eat that big flutter spoon they're not going to always eat that big plug or that big crankbait right so this is an alternative if you're fishing an area you know there's fish there should be fish and you just slow down and finesse them giant worms can be finesse guys uh, summertime worm fishing ledge fishing big heads big worms big bites big bass i hope this gives you guys some confidence to check out some of these baits and head out to your local fishery and try them guys down below in the video description i will link all these products my favorite colors real quickly i keep it fairly simple it's going to be june bug some kind of june bug some kind of like plum PB and J or some kind of purple, um, some kind of version of June bug and green pumpkin, Alabama, Alabama bug or Texas craw. But guys, you get the picture down below. I will link all that stuff, but those are my lineups. That's what I do. If I'm throwing a Carolina rig. It's that if I'm throwing a Texas rig, it's that if I'm throwing a shaky head. It's that and a power shot. It's that really that simple. These are tried and true fish catchers. Uh, hopefully this gives you guys the confidence to get out and tie on a worm and catch them this summer. Guys, as always, thank you for watching. Like I said, I'll link everything down below in the video description. If you learned something or you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys on the next video.